Hello and welcome back to Physics 141, Classical Electromagnetism 1. This is now the last lesson for this chapter. So, so far we have discussed about uh, polarization and how it generates bound charges, where it can have uh, volume bound charges, which is just the divergence of the polarization. We also have generalized Gauss law to cover uh, dielectrics. So, the divergence of the electric displacement will just give you the volume bound charge density for free charges. And we also have discussed about the electric displacement, which is basically just the total electric field because they are just related by this proportionality constant here, uh, epsilon, which is the permittivity of that material. The, the, basically, the permittivity is the property of a material to permit. Uh, or allow the electric, the electric field to flow within it. So we also have discussed about polarization and how it's related to the total electric field inside a polarized object. And they are, and they are related by the susceptibility of the material. So the higher the susceptibility of the material, the easier it is to polarize. So for this uh, chapter, we will be uh, discussing about uh, boundary valued problems and how to deal with this problem if you are now or if there is now dielectrics involved. So if you have a homogeneous uh, dielectric, you can actually calculate the volume bound charges in your homogeneous dielectric uh, given the uh, free charges, the volume free charges in the uh, vicinity or in the configuration. Uh, note that if there are no volume free charges, it only means that there are no uh, volume bound charges, but there can be a surface bound uh, charges so for dielectrics uh, we now we will now establish these two uh, general boundary conditions so of course at the boundary the potential must always be continuous even though it's a boundary between two uh, dielectrics the potential must still be the same but the perpendicular component of the displacement is discontinuous so Epsilon times the derivative of the potential. This is just electric field. Epsilon times the electric field. That's actually your displacement. The displacement below minus the displacement above is equal to the amount of free charges at the surface. Take note. If there are no free charges at the sur surface and only bound charges, then uh, the, this, uh, the displacement uh, is continuous. The perpendicular component of the displacement is continuous. This, this should be equal to zero if there are no free surface charges. Okay, so let's now have, go directly to an example. So this is a dielectric sphere in a uniform electric field. So you have a sphere with dielectric constant K and you immerse it in a uniform electric field. So what will happen is because of the external electric field, this dielectric sphere will become polarized. So it will have a polarization in this direction. Then there will be a net electric field inside, which will also be in this direction, which means that if the electric field is in that direction, then the displacement will also be in that uh, direction. So uh, that one. Okay. So, how do we now find the electric field inside of this uh, sphere? So, first, let's, uh, let's show the general uh, solution for this problem. For this problem, the general solution Or the potential inside and outside will be the one that we 
we are all the general solution that we have always been using when you are dealing when we are we are in spherical coordinates so it's a l r to the l plus b l r to the negative l plus one p l cosine of theta so in terms of powers of r and legendary polynomials so similarly the potential outside will have the same uh, general solution i will just use a different uh, coefficient c and d Okay, so these are our general solution for the potential inside and outside. They basically have the same uh, form. What are now our boundary conditions? So we'll start first with the generic boundary conditions. So as R approaches zero, what will happen to the potential inside? The potential inside must be finite meaning it must not be equal to infinity and as r approaches infinity what will happen to our potential outside our potential outside since there is an electric field outside it will approach <coughs> it will approach negative e naught dot dl and we have we actually have encountered this uh, boundary condition for, for before negative e naught and uh, it's, since it's a dot product between E and uh, DL, where in this case DL in spherical coordinates is DR, or for this specific case DL is equal to DR, the dot product between E naught dot DR is E naught DR cosine theta, and the integral of DR is just R, so E naught R cosine theta. E naught is the magnitude of this electric field here. So it will approach to this uh, value as R approaches infinity. And then, at the surface, the boundary surface of the sphere, at R is equal to capital R, the potential inside must be equal to the potential outside. And lastly, at R is equal to R, uh, since there are no free charges, so in this case, there are no conductors here, there are no free charges, so only bound charges are at the surface and this means that the perpendicular component of the displacement is uh, continuous so you will have inside you have epsilon which is the permittivity so in this case the permittivity inside is just k times epsilon naught. outside the permittivity is epsilon naught. so it's just uh, epsilon partial of the potential inside with respect to r and this must be equal to epsilon naught partial of the potential outside with respect to uh, r. So these are our four boundary conditions. Now, if you use this boundary condition, say boundary condition 1, on our general uh, potential function inside, as r approaches 0, so this term becomes 0, as r approaches 0, but as r approaches 0, this term becomes infinite. But our condition uh, strictly states that it must not be equal to infinity. So therefore, we need to set all of the BLs equal to zero. So using boundary condition one, the potential inside will just be uh, ALs. BLs are all equal to zero. Now, Let's now apply boundary condition 2 on the potential outside. So, as R approaches infinity, so this term here, R to the negative L plus 1, as R approaches infinity, this will approach 0. So, we are left with CL R to the L, PL cosine theta, and it will approach this uh, value, negative E naught R cosine theta. So, using uh, boundary condition 2, the potential outside is equal to, uh, you will have summation of L, P L, R to the L, P L of cosine theta, I will, I'm, not, I'm just going to skip as a function of cosine theta, and this is equal to negative E naught R cosine theta. So from here, 
you can actually solve for uh, you can actually solve for the values of CL that will survive as R approaches infinity for the potential outside. So there is a, because of this cosine theta that's actually P1. So you do a, something like a Fourier strict here. You multiply both sides by PL prime and then integrate over D cosine theta. And you will get uh, that there will only be one term in the summation that will survive. So only uh, only L is equal to L prime is equal to 1 will survive. So you will get, you will actually get C1 is equal to negative E naught. So in this general solution here for the potential outside, only one term in the C, the first summation will survive. Only CL, uh, only C1 will survive. And C1 is actually negative E naught. So our uh, our potential now. I'm just gonna erase this. Our so general solution now for the potential outside will now be negative E naught R cosine theta. This is P1. So A1 R to the 1 P1. R to the 1 P1. Uh, plus uh, summation of L DL R to the negative L plus 1 PL as a function of cosine theta. So this will now be our two uh, solutions, general solutions, simplified general solutions for the potential inside and outside. And we can, we have two unknowns, AL and DL, and we have two equations left, the boundary conditions for the potential at R is equal to R. So we will utilize these two to solve for AL and DL. So if you apply boundary condition three, that at R is equal to capital R, these two potentials must be equal. So if you do that, you will actually get the relationship between AL and DL. So basically, you just equate these two equations here at, by changing R with capital R. And you will uh, get a result. The result that you will actually get is that uh, you will actually get uh, AL is equal to uh, DL over R to the 2L plus 1. So you get a relationship between AL and DL. So you can now write AL in terms of DL or vice versa, uh, DL in terms of AL. So you only now have one unknown, depending on which uh, term you will, uh, you will use as reference, is either AL or DL. So to solve that last unknown, you apply the last boundary condition. So you just use epsilon here as K times epsilon uh, no. By doing that, you will actually get that only L is equal to L prime is equal to 1 will survive. The rest will all be 0. Meaning, in this uh, summation here, only one term will survive. L is equal to 1. So you will have A1, R to the 1, P1, which is P1 is just cosine theta. Similarly here, only one term will survive, L is equal to 1, so D1, where D1 can be written in terms of A1. So you will actually get, uh, I will just leave this to you, since it ju it's just a, a repetitive, uh, it's just a repetitive uh, process, and we have done this process before. So you will actually get A1 equal to 3 over uh, k plus 2 epsilon naught. And from this, you can solve for d1. So from here, dl is just equal to al r to the negative 2l plus 1. So meaning d1 is just a1 times r to the uh, negative 3 or d1 over r cubed. So, 
that's how you solve for uh, E1. Sorry. Positive pala. Okay, cross multiply pala. Okay. So, R cube. A1 R cube. So, D1 uh, will just be A1 R cube. So, from this uh, reference here. So, you can now solve the two and you can now solve for the potential inside. So, doing so, the potential inside will just be from this equation, just A1 R to the 1 uh, P1. So, A1 R1 cosine theta. So, basically this one, A1 3 over K plus 2 E naught R1 R to the 1 or R P1 which is cosine theta. So, this is the potential uh, inside. So, what we are actually asked is find the electric field inside. So, to solve for the electric field, we just uh, need to take the gradient, negative gradient of this. So, the electric field inside, just the negative gradient of uh, the potential uh, inside. So, we will just get uh, the gradient operator in R and theta. So, partial with respect to R, R hat plus partial uh, 1 over R, partial with respect to theta, theta hat of the potential inside. So, taking the derivative of this with respect to R, that's the R hat component. Taking the derivative of this with respect to theta, that will give you the theta hat uh, component. So, it will give you something like this 3 epsilon naught over k plus 2. And you will have cosine theta uh, r hat minus uh, sine theta theta hat. Where again, this is the definition of the unit vector z hat. So our electric field inside will be along the z hat direction as or along the direction of the or actually e naught times z this is actually our uh, original electric field or the electric field outside so meaning electric field inside will be 3 over k plus 2 times the electric field uh, outside so this is our final answer so, what is now the picture? What's now the picture of this? Uh, how will our the electric field of this uh, configuration uh, look like? So it, it will look like something like this. So, in, inside, electric field inside is constant. It doesn't depend on any variable. It's only proportional to electric field outside. So inside, you will notice that the electric field is actually uniform. So this is the electric field inside. It's uniform. And outside, the electric field will actually slightly bend, but it will go back to its original it will slightly bend because of the bound charges. Similarly here, it will slightly bend, it will slightly bend. But at regions far from the dielectric sphere, the electric field is actually uniform. But near the sphere, it will have some, uh, some curve, some curvature will not be uh, uniform. So there will be negative bound charges here and there will be positive bound charges uh, here. You can actually, uh, sorry, positive. You can actually solve for uh, the bound charge uh, density and it will actually depend on cosine theta in this case. So cosine theta is positive from 0 to pi over 2, cosine theta is positive. From pi over 2 to pi, cosine theta is negative. So that is uh, how 
the electric uh, the electric field of the uh, the electric sphere in a uniform electric field will look like so let's now go to another example so if you're interested with the potential outside this is the potential uh, outside so let's now go to another example so this is a point charge above a dielectric we actually have a similar uh, similar problem uh, before but instead of dielectric we have a grounded conducting plane and in that case we use the method of uh, images similarly we can use the method of images actually here okay so <clears throat> this is what will happen Assuming this is a positive point charge, a distance d above this dielectric uh, plane, and we are actually asked to find the force exerted by the dielectric on the point charge Q. So this force is actually attractive because uh, initially the dielectric is neutral, but because of the point charge Q, if this is positive, then there will be uh, bound charges at the surface. And very close to the perpendicular distance of the charge there will be there will be more negative charges there will be more dense but uh, far away from the charge or far away from the perpendicular distance from the charge there will be less uh, negative charges so the, the charges are more concentrated at the center here at this uh, point here and as you as you if we will use cylindrical coordinates because this is just two dimensional so as you go for large distances s from this uh, origin a distance s from the origin the charge density or the number of positive charges per unit area will decrease so more of uh, more of the negative charges are concentrated at the uh, center close to the origin okay so in this case there will also be no volume uh, bound charges because there are no volume free uh, charges so you will notice that this will now this now looks like an interaction between a point charge and a negative sheet of uh, charge a point charge and a negative sheet of charge so if you have a negative sheet of charge its electric field is actually uh, the direction of its electric field is actually a uh, uniform so this is the electric field of the uh, due to the bound charges due to the bound charge uh, bound sheet of charge uh, due to the electric field so say for example if you consider the electric field due to point charge Q at that point and the electric field of Q At that point, given by that one, at this point, that is the electric field due to Q, and you will notice that by symmetry, similar to what we have uh, discussed uh, before, we discussed Coulomb's law and Gauss law, because of symmetry. Uh, the electric field or say the force in general exerted by the point charge Q on the plane will only have a Z component the X and Y or the S and uh, phi components will actually cancel each other out so only the Z component will actually survive and you will notice the electric field of the sheet of charge is already uh, in a Z component and for the electric field due to the point charge, only the Z component will actually uh, survive. So, if we try to calculate the bound charge density in the surface, it's just the polarization uh, that uh, n hat. So, n hat here is actually Z hat. So, basically, this is uh, P dot uh, Z hat. So, P dot Z hat is basically just P Z or p cosine theta or the z component of the where theta is this uh, angle here the z component of the 
polarization. And the Z component of the polarization is just epsilon naught the susceptibility times the Z component of the electric field. Okay, so what is the Z component of the electric field? So basically, this is the Z component of the total electric field. The electric field due to the point charge and the electric field due to the uh, bound charges at the uh, dielectric uh, surface. So this will be due to the Z component of this electric field. Again, only the Z component of this will survive. The Y and X or the S and V components will cancel each other out. And the electric field of the bound charges, which is already along the Z axis, actually along the negative Z uh, axis. So the electric field due to the point charge, uh, Now let's start with the bound charge, the surface charge density. So if you have a sheet of charge, its electric field is actually sigma over 2 epsilon naught. So sigma B over 2 epsilon naught. And in this case, its direction is negative Z hat. So meaning its Z component is negative sigma B over 2 epsilon naught Z hat. So this is the Z component. For the... Z component of the electric field of the point charge Q is actually 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught kq over r over r squared so q over uh, separation distance squared so the separation distance is this distance here this is curly r and for the Z component since this is an angle theta the Z component is cosine theta of that, cosine theta of this value, so cosine theta. And the direction is actually negative Z hat. So the curly R, this direction, by Pythagorean theorem, that's just, this is just S, and that is D, so uh, S squared plus D squared. And from the definition of cosine theta, so, by the way, curly R, Curly R or curly R squared is just uh, D squared or S squared plus D squared. And cosine theta is adjacent side, which is uh, D over the hypotenuse, which is square root of S squared plus D squared. So you, have, you will have D over square root of S squared plus D squared. So substituting these two values here, you will get that the you will get the z component as uh, negative q d over four pi epsilon naught uh, r squared plus d squared to the three halves z hat. So <clears throat> we need uh, these two components here. We only need the Z components of the total electric field. So this and this. What can mean? This is 4 pi, 4 pi epsilon naught squared, uh, R squared plus D squared to the 3 halves. Okay. So we only need uh, the, the two components. So using these two components, of the electric field due to the sheet of charge and due to the point charge, we can now solve for uh, easy this one. So easy E sub Z actually just uh, negative one over four pi epsilon naught Q D over S squared plus D squared the three halves minus sigma b over 2 epsilon uh, naught. So we have obtained easy, this term here. So <clears throat> from this uh, equation, we can now solve for sigma b, just epsilon naught, uh, the susceptibility times this term here. Uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught qd over s squared plus d squared the three halves minus sigma b over two epsilon naught. 
we can then solve for sigma b. So, just manipulate the equation, rearrange the equation to solve for sigma b. And you will get negative 1 over 2 pi. So, it's a negative charge density. Susceptibility t plus 2 qd over s squared plus d squared to the d halves. So, our surface charge density, bound charge density, is actually a function of s. In this case, it's actually sigma b is actually a function of s. So, depending on how far is it from the center of this circle here, uh, it's actually inversely proportional. So, the farther you are, the larger the s, the smaller the sigma, the smaller the surface charge uh, density. So, knowing sigma b, we can then solve for the total bound charge on the surface, which is just sigma b times uh, dA. So, our dA here will be S dS d phi, but since there is no phi component here, the integral of d phi will give you 2 pi. So, this is just equal to 2 pi S uh, dS. So, you use this one as dA and then sigma b here and then integrate. So, this is just a simple uh, integration. You will have S dS. So, you will let u is equal to s squared plus d squared. Therefore, du will have a factor s ds. That one. So, doing that, uh, this will give you a value of negative uh, xe over xe plus 2 pdi times q. So, this is your bound charge uh, density. It's proportional, of course, to the uh, point charge uh, Q and the proportionality factor is this one and of course it's negative that's what we have uh, uh, earlier introduced so what does this mean so this means that we can actually treat the dielectric uh, surface or the dielectric volume for that matter as a point charge with this amount of charge and we will actually use the method of images to solve uh, the force of attraction. So, uh, the problem now reduces to the force of attraction between Q, our point charge Q, and our uh, dielectric sheet represented by this uh, bound charge here, QB. So, the force of attraction between these two. And one of the uh, main problem or one of the small problems is where will we put our QB now if we treat this whole uh, dielectric as one point charge where will we, will we put QB now so similar with the method of images we can actually put QB uh, a distance D a distance D below the z is equal to 0 line. So, assuming the surface is the z is equal to 0 uh, line, then we can put our QB use similar with what we did in the method of images. We can put our QB here, the replacement of this whole dielectric system here, a distance d below the, below the surface. So, from this configuration, we can now solve for the force between them. Force exerted by Q on the dielectric and the force exerted by the dielectric on Q. It's just the same by virtue of Newton's third law of uh, motion. So, the force now will be KQ1, Q2 over R, Coulomb's law. So Q1 is Q, Q2 is QB, uh, R squared, R is their distance, in this case 2D squared. And since this is the force exerted by the dielectric on the point charge, the force exerted by the dielectric on the point charge, since the, the dielectric is negatively charged, then it will, uh, the force is attractive. So the direction of the force exerted by the dielectric on the point charge will be uh, towards uh, the negative Z hat uh, axis. 
So, substituting all of this result, the force on the point charge will be negative uh, Pe, the susceptibility, Q squared over 16 pi epsilon naught uh, D squared. D hat. So, we have actually obtained a similar uh, uh, result as before, except for the term here. Uh, this represents the uh, dielectric, dielectric contribution. Uh, also, note that uh, we can actually replace this one. Since the susceptibility is just k minus 1, so this term here is just k minus 1 over k plus 1. So, I can actually replace this whole term here by uh, k plus 1, or, sorry, k minus 1, k minus 1 over k plus 1. Now, if the dielectric, if there is no dielectric, that means k is equal to 1, then you will have 1 minus 1, 0. There will be no bound uh, charges. Similarly, here. So, since I can replace this term here as by k minus 1 over k plus 1, if there is no dielectric, then k is equal to 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0, so there is no force. In, there is no force since there is no bound charges to attract the uh, point charge okay okay so let's for the last uh, example i'm not gonna solve this explicitly because again this is a very this is a very long uh, solution it will take a lot amount of space and i only have a very limited amount of board space so you have an insulated conducting sphere placed in a uniform electric field so find the electric field in the region with the electric. So in this region here. So this is a conductor. This could be a metal. And this is a dielectric or an insulator. And then vacuum outside. So you have an electric field. Uh, an electric field uh, outside. So you have an electric field outside. And this electric field will polarize this dielectric here. So there will be uh, bound charges now. So there will be uh, positive charges on this uh, part of the inner surface of the dielectric sphere, spherical shell. And on the lower part, there will be negative charges. So, of course, inside the conductor, the electric field is zero since this is a conductor. So, hmm. so, take note, these charges are not on the surface of the conductor. They are on the surface of the dielectric. So, your your electric field will actually have uh, something like this kind of pattern. So this will be the pattern for the electric field now. And outside, we'll have some uh, bending. But at points outside, far from the sphere, it's actually uh, uniform. It's just straight line, ENA. Okay, so this is what this is how your uh, electric field lines in this configuration will look like. So I'm just going to set up the boundary conditions and the general solutions for this problem. So <clears throat> you will notice that we will have three uh, regions here. The region 1, uh, the electric field here, basically 0. So this is inside. This is the electric field outside here in this region. And we will, uh, the unknown electric field will 
I will just denote the ion electric field as E for this region here, the region with dielectric. Okay, so zero electric field means the potential is constant, but we can always set it to zero. So we can always set the potential inside to be zero, meaning the potential at this surface here is zero, it's grounded, something like it's grounded. So the potential here will be V, and the potential here will be V outside. Okay, you have V inside zero, V is the potential in the region with dielectric, the potential outside is V out. Okay, so this will be now be our general solution. So for the potential inside, it's zero. The potential in the middle, so in spherical coordinates general, it's like this, AL R to the L plus BL R to the negative L plus 1 BL of cosine theta. And for the potential outside, so similar with what in the first example in this lesson, it will approach to, uh, or it's, it's equal to negative E naught R cosine theta plus, instead of BL, I'm just going to use uh, DL. So these are our three uh, potentials for the three regions here. Okay, so what are now our boundary uh, conditions? So first boundary uh, condition. So we now have applied the boundary condition R approaches zero and R approaches infinity. So we only need uh, the boundary condition at R is equal to uh, R is equal to A and at R is equal to B. So we have two uh, regions actually. So at R is equal to A, the potential inside must be equal to potential outside. But since the potential inside is zero, meaning the potential in the middle must be equal to uh, zero. So B must be equal to zero. At R is equal to a. So this potential V must be equal to 0 at R is equal to A. So V at A. And then uh, for the potential outside, so V at R is equal to B must be equal to uh, the potential outside at R is equal to B. So at R is equal to A, the potential in the dielectric region must be equal to 0. At R is equal to B, the potential in the dielectric region must be equal to the potential outside. And lastly, <clears throat> at R is equal to B, since there are no free charges, here, uh, the conductor is not charged, so there are no free charges. So the, the electric displacement, the perpendicular component of the electric displacement will be uh, continuous. So at R is equal to B, uh, <clears throat> the displacement is continuous. Again, you can change this to K epsilon naught. So that's it. You have three unknowns, AL, BL, and DL. You have three boundary conditions. So you can now solve this uh, problem. I will leave the uh, solution to you. So you just apply the boundary conditions to these equations here. Okay. So doing so uh, will give you uh, this result. So the potential in the region with dielectric is given by this one. 
and the electric field is given by this one where a1 is given by this so it's actually a very long a long result <clears throat> so even though it's only one term only one term survives in the summation in the general solution only a1 <laughs> survives but a1 is a very long uh, result okay so i will leave this uh, to you okay so that's it so that ends the chapter on uh, electric fields in matter so essentially when electric field interacts with matter uh, such as a dielectric the matter or the dielectric becomes polarized and depending on its polarizability or uh, susceptibility or its dielectric constant those three are all uh, related or permittivity for instance for those four are all related depending on those values uh, the material can be easy po easily polarized or cannot be polarized at all okay so that ends uh, this chapter and i will see you again hopefully in the next chapter